Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to Special OAA Now Football Preview Show, the white edition. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger of the Dragons Insider, blogger of Inside the OAA, and one of the hosts of Between Terminas on Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching, hearing us on a local voice, and also watching on YouTube. We had the blue last week. Um, we have the red next week. This week we got the white division. Of course, um, the white contrasts of six teams. Of course, we will include Harper Woods in the um, in this show. Of course, they will be in the league next season. So let's talk our first team, which is the Highlanders of Rochester Adams. Last season they were very competitive. Uh, just really had some games where this didn't go their way. They were very young last year. They got a lot of experience coming back. So here's Adams coach Tony Petrito at the podium. Good afternoon, uh, I'm Tony Petrito. This is my 19th season at Rochester Adams and my 33rd year as a coach, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, I have a special appreciation for being here today, as some of you may know. Um, and we've actually accepted this as our program. Our model for the season is persistence. Um, and I'm sorry, resistance, re resilience. I'm losing my marbles. Um, COVID fog. Um, Zach, a former teammate of his at this, for the United States, is uh, named Steve Gleason who has uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, and he's been fighting it for 11 years. And that prognosis is beyond belief. And I was up at five in the morning one day, I'm getting old, watching the sports center featured on this guy, coaching his kid with his eyes on the computer. Ball in my living room couch, changed my whole model for the season, came to the kids and they accepted it. So, so all of you demonstrate resilience in everything you do and the fact that you're still here playing football, so I want to applaud all of you. Um, that year was not a great year for us in a lot of ways including on the field. We hope to be much more competitive this year and a lot of with these four captains elected by their peers and I'll let them introduce themselves. Christian Shelmer, senior slot and corner. Marco DeCreasy, senior safety and slot. Joey Shallow, senior slot and corner. Alex DeGree, uh, defensive end and tackle. We're excited to go to the defending state champ week one and play against West Bloomfield. We're going to hope to uh, give him a bit of a battle. So have a great day. Good luck and stay safe. When I look at Adams, of course, they run the famous triple option offense, which is known as the Veer. Um, of course, you know, that is a very tough offense to go up against if you're a defense. So I caught up with the master of the Veer, Tony Petrito, on how he was doing. All right. We got Adams coach Tony Petrito here. Of course, um, last season rough, was a little bit rough. A little bit rough on both sides. He had COVID, of course, and yeah. then on the team. Um, talk about how last year impacted you guys. Well, it was a big challenge. It was, uh, and for many, it was kind of like a rebirth for our whole program and for me personally. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that um, our ability to be resilient and get back to where we were traditionally is what we're looking for. So we're looking to be real competitive. Talk about Parker. Um, obviously, of course. He was a wide receiver. He was a wide receiver. I remember I am um, producer Joe Johnson was really high on him when he did the video a couple years ago. Um, talk about how Parker's development has been at quarterback. Yeah, you know, he's as the season progressed this year because he had never ever played quarterback before. Now he's playing varsity quarterback. By the time we got to our seventh game, he was becoming more special by the second. Um, if he develops as a passer, he could be one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Um, and he's, and he's if already one of the best defensive backs. So we're really excited to have him on our team. What is your expectation this year, coach? Listen, we're, we're, we're going to try to be ready to give West Bloomfield a battle week one. And that's our singular vision at this point, And we'll kind of pick it up after that. Thank you real much, Coach. You got it, man. You guys are great. Yeah. Adams is a very interesting team this year. Of course, Parker Bico, obviously. They got other players as well. I'm really high on Brady Prescorn um, is another one. Of course, he was a sophomore. He's going to be a sophomore this year. I'm another, another guy I'm high on, Hassan Murray as well, playing on the O-line, D-line as well, who wasn't at media day. Um, when I look at Adams' schedule, I mean, like, it looks very daunting. I mean, obviously, going to the swamp week one to play West Bloomfield, that's not an easy thing to do. And, you know, going to be challenged by West Bloomfield. I mean, like, going against the defending Division one state champs, that's brutal. I mean, really, really brutal. Uh, week two, they take on Oxford, of course. Um, that'll be at Oxford, of course. Um, we know what... Um, That'll be really interesting, of course. Some two experienced teams going to get at it with one another, of course. Um, Ox, we know they like to, um, we know that they're well coached in the Zach line. Um, so I'll be very curious to see how that game will go between those two teams there. Then September 10th, they take on Oak Park. I mean, like, Oak Park's a team that um, has really um, 
you know, they, they've given Adams fits, but so has Adams in the past. So that'll be another really good game there. Um, and also that is the first league game for Adams this year. Um, September 17th against Rochester. We all know what happened last year, that um, shocking playoff blowout, of course. I did predict Adams to win that game last year, but um, an apologies to Ian Locke. Um, other than that, um, it'll be a really interesting game. Of course, Adams own Rochester. They've won 15 straight against Rochester. Rochester hasn't beaten Adams since 1996. So that is some interesting stats there. Um, the Battle of the Veers, September 24th between Adams and Seaholm. That'll be really interesting there. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, that one will be really interesting, especially because there'll be a lot of time possession football in that game. Because you know what the Veer likes to do, of course, um, time possession football. October 1st, Adams goes to North Farmington. Last season, this game went overtime, 35-34. North won that game on a gamble by, by Coach Petrito um, that didn't pay off. Um, that'll be really interesting there. October the 8th, they go to they take on Groves. Um, that'll be a really good game at Adams. Um, I think, you know, it'll be really interesting to see what happens there. October 15th, they go to Stony Creek, and that is going to be another very daunting matchup. Of course, um, Stony Creek last season was a playoff team. They lost a lot of talent a year ago, but that's been a really nice rivalry. Um, Stony Creek beat Adams last season at Adams, so I know Adams will be motivated to get some revenge there. And then they close out the year October 22nd when they go to Detroit Renaissance to take on the Phoenix. Um, first meeting ever, I think, between the two teams, of course. Um, Adams is a team that I think could be really, really good this season. I'm really high on this team. A lot of experience coming back. Anytime you have experience, that matters. And that is huge for Adams. So that's my thoughts on the Highlanders. Now let's go from the Highlanders to the Falcons of Groves. Of course, last season, really interesting for them. Um, had to forfeit their um, their season because of ineligible players a year ago. Um, a lot of expectations for Groves um, this upcoming season. Um, here is um, Coach and Brendan Flirty at the podium. Afternoon. Uh, first off, I want to congratulate West Bloomfield, Coach Rice. You held a job this season. Good luck, Coach. Coach Lyon from Oxford, welcome aboard the OAA. Uh, Coach Marshall's not here, but you know, one wish him luck and. Uh, over at Southfield. Guys from Hartford Woods, welcome Coach Olden, welcome to the OAA. Uh, it's a great league. Uh, looking forward to some competition and you guys coming up and battling. So we're, you're welcome, all right? Um, we're really looking forward to this year. Looking forward to playing and doing our playing on the field and not anywhere else. Uh, I'm gonna let my guys introduce themselves real quick. Hello, I'm Stavros Hanos, a senior running back in slot. <coughs> I'm Jimmy Holcomb, I'm a senior on center. I'm Logan Flaherty, linebacker and fullback. Uh, Coach Vernon, thanks. Hopefully I wasn't the last guy during the information in this year. Maybe I was, I don't know, but I appreciate what you do. I know it's a big pain in the butt put it together. So I appreciate you men putting this. This is awesome opportunity. I miss Coach Rowley, so I'll just kind of echo his chant. You know, this is the greatest game, you know, on the planet. You know, football and as much as we want to battle and kick each other's butt, uh, you know, our respective weeks when we play each other and maybe more weeks than just those, uh, we want to wish everybody luck, stay healthy, and uh, just keep playing football. Thank you. When you look at the Falcons, they do got a very good running back coming come back in Stavonos Panos. I'm curious to see how their young guys are going to produce this year. Obviously, we need, anytime you return, um, you're going to have a very young team, but also they do have a very good um, – player in Michigan State bound um, wide receiver Jada Magnum coming back as well. So a lot of optimism surrounding Groves when you look at the players they have. Very young team though coming back. So, But I caught up with Coach Flaherty on talking about the Falcons. I got the coach at Beverly Hills, Wiley Groves. I'm Coach Brendan Flaherty here, of course. Um, coach, um, last season, you know, didn't go your way, didn't end your way. I mean, like, um, but, um, but um, what are the expectations heading into this year for you? Well, for us, just to get back and, you know, fight our battles on the field, you know, playing football and getting back to, you know, air quotes normal uh, would be it, you know, but we're just excited to actually play, you know, and let the chips fall where they may. Talk about your quarterback, Caden. Um, obviously, of course, um, you're going to the freshman quarterback this year. Um, you got a pretty young team this year. Uh, talk about the situation, how that's been brewing. 
Yeah, Caden Hardy actually will be a sophomore Sorry. for us. And I apologize. That's okay. Max Young and him are battling on Max will be a, uh, a junior for us. So those guys are battling out. Each guy does some good things. And like the competition has made the, you know, the best out of both of them here. So we're still, you know, figuring that out. But both are talented guys, great families, great parents, you know, and, and both bring someone to the table. So we're excited for those guys. And ironically, you know, we got some older guys. You know, we got some three-year varsity players for us. You know, Stavros Panos, yep. Jaden Mangum, and you know, my son Logan Flaherty. And then we got some other guys that, you know, they're just new. You know, and they're just inexperienced. So, <laughs> only way to get experience is to play. What are your expectations this year, Coach? Uh, you know, beat our crosstown rivals, win the league, and make the playoffs. Thank you real much, Coach. Good luck against Dexter. Thanks. That'll be very interesting this year when they look at Groves. I mean, like, obviously, he mentioned, of course, with Jaden Magnum, of course, his son Logan Flaherty, obviously, um, playing big roles. Um, but when you look at the schedule, of course, they do open up with them. Ian Locks, Alamana, the Dexter Dreadnoughts at Wayne State, which will be really interesting. I know Ian will be keeping a very close eye on that game on August 27th at Wayne State. Um, September 3rd, they take on the Warriors of Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, curious to see how this one's going to go, especially um, going up for Groves' defense, going up against a really good quarterback in Isaiah Marshall. Um, just curious to see how that's going to go out. Um, week 3, they take on North Farmington. Um, Groves and North Farmington, we know they've had their um, classic battles in the past as well. Um, week 4, this one's interesting. September 17th, the Battle of Birmingham. Arch rival Seaholm, of course, Groves knocked out Seaholm from the postseason a year ago. Um, Seaholm and Groves, they've had some back and forth between one another. Of course, um, of course, last, of course, Groves was the victim of a um, miracle on 34th Street play in the fourth quarter last year in the regular season against, um, I mean, against Seaholm. So, very interesting storyline how that's going to fall out, fall out between Groves and Seaholm. September 24th, they take on Oak Park. Um, this one's really interesting there. Um, it'll be a really interesting game how they match up there. October 1st, they got Rochester. Um, another interesting game there. Um, October the um, 8th, they take on Adams. That'll be another really good game there. October 15th, it's a tough one. They go to Clarkson to take on the Wolves. Um, we know how good that team's going to be. And they close out the year October 22nd when they go to um, Runkle Field to take on a very good Sterling Heights Stevenson team who is loaded. Um, so when I look at Groves, I got concerns at quarterback. Um, that's a big time concern. That schedule looks really, really vicious when you look at that schedule. So I'm curious to see how Groves is going to do this upcoming season. Um, let's go now from Groves to the newest team of the OA, which is the Harper Woods Pioneers. They are officially not in the OA as of yet. They'll be in the league this winter. Um, but the Pioneers were at Media Day, and um, Coach. Um, and they, they brought they brought a full um, nice blend of teams. So here is Coach, uh, the defensive coordinator from Harper Woods at the podium. Hi everybody, I'm, uh, I'm not Coach Oden. I'm Coach Booker, defensive coordinator, assistant head coach. Uh, coach Oden's out on vacation, so I'm here to represent. We are excited, very excited to be joining the LAA next year, um, all the way around. Uh, this year, we got a pretty tough schedule. Um, veteran. <laughs> Veteran group of team coming back. We got 32 guys that has played on the uh, on a varsity game. Uh, we got 11 returning starters. Uh, the strength of our team will be our run game with four offensive linemen coming back, and then our defense will be our secondary. Uh, I'm going to these guys introduce themselves. Demando Ferris, senior O line demo. Jacob Odin, sophomore DB. All right, Chamberlain, DB and running back. Benny Booth, senior, athletic quarterback. Brandon Center for Ola, senior. And again, we just want to thank you for allowing us to be in OA next year. We're very excited. We appreciate it. Have a good, very good season for everybody. Stay healthy. Thank you. I have watched the Pioneers play in the past, and they have some potential, a lot of potential. Had very good success. Um, just a very unusual year last year for them. So I caught up with an interview with Harper Woods to see how life of coming in the OA will be for them in the future. 
Yep. We got the co we got the defensive coordinator defensive coordinator right yes, defensive coordinator at Harper Woods Coach Booker here of course welcome to the OAA um, talk about your this team this year obviously Harper Woods of course um, very tough schedule coming up um, so um, talk about the strength of the pioneers the OAA nation. Uh, so this year we're going to be uh, our strength our our offense to be our run game returning four offensive linemen. Um, and then we got two, two or both running backs coming back from last year too, with uh, Christian Stokes and Dakari uh, Tramble. So, and then up front we have Damari, uh, Demano, Ferris, Brandon, Sandifer, and Breon Key. So with those guys coming back, they're pretty much the nucleus of our offense. On our defensive side of the ball, we have uh, our whole secondary pretty much returning. So we'll be okay. Strong there with uh, Jacob Oden, a uh, freshman with 14 offers right now. And then uh, we have Christian Stokes to be playing some some Fiper and some safety, and Dakari be playing some safety, and then we return to the senior uh, at corner. So Talk about your schedule, of course. It's a very brutal schedule for you guys. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we want to compete uh, on a high level, and we want our guys to learn. Uh, we did the same thing last year with our guys, uh, playing a tough schedule, making sure that we, uh, you know, guys got to cut their teeth because we knew we was going to have, we only had seven seniors last year. We knew the nucleus of our team was coming back, so we wanted to get those guys to cut our teeth. Definitely in the season that we knew everybody was going to be playing in the playoffs. So, What is your expectations here, Coach? Uh, to make a deep run in the playoffs and uh, hopefully compete for a state championship. Thank you very much, Coach. Right. Thank you. hearing a lot from me today. When I look at Harper Woods' schedule, and I looked at it beforehand, um, they they get to play Novi Detroit Catholic Central, Warren D. LaSalle. Um, they open up with Pickney. Um, but, and then they have, anytime you play those type of games, like in the Catholic League, it's going to be really difficult. Um, also, they do close out the year with E-Course, which is going to be, which is their natural rival um, in the past, obviously, with them. Um, Harper Woods. So when I look at the Pioneers this season, I mean, it's a really tough schedule they do, they got. They open up with Pickney. Um, you know, so it's going to be really challenging for the Pioneers this upcoming season. Um, I'm curious to see how the quarterback play of Vinny Booth is going to be. He's a transfer from Dearborn Etzel Ford. Um, I'm curious to see how um, Christian Stokes plays um, and the rest of the Pioneers. I mean, I watched him play Davison a year ago. Didn't look really good, but... You know, they played Davidson, and, you know, Davidson is a really good team. So I like what Coach Rob Olden has been doing with the schedule. Um, it's final years in independent before coming into the OAA. So I'm curious to see what the Pioneers are going to look like this season before coming into the OAA next year. Um, so we'll see what happens, Hopper Woods. We will keep a very close eye on OAA now, um, the podcast on the Pioneers' journey as an independent in their final season before they join the OAA next year. Um, let's take a, we're going to take a break here. We're going to talk two more teams in the OA football preview show, the White Edition. We want a habitat home. I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a habitat homeowner. Being a habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termini here. Of course, we're going to talk the Raiders of North Farmington. Of course, this is a team that really, um, really, that made the playoffs last year, earned their first district title, um, ended up going up to Traverse City for the playoffs. I mean, like, um, I mean, like, that was a really nice trip going up Lake Michigan. So I caught up with them, the Raiders, um, and their coach, John Herstein, about the, um, the state of the Raiders. All right, my name's John Herstein. I'm the head football coach at North Farmington. Uh, you know, what an opportunity. Thank you, Coach Vernon, for putting this on. The, the staff here at Rochester High, what a great opportunity for all the young men to participate in it. Coach Blackstock, thank you for the compliment. You know, uh, guys have worked really hard, and we really appreciate that. And I think that's a testament to much of what you said, the admiration you have for the fellow coaches in this league. It is a tremendous league, and, uh, you know, we're excited to be in it and to uh, be competing. Um, you know, kids have worked really hard this year. Uh, obviously, much like all the other athletes in the room, overcoming a lot of obstacles. And I think it makes everybody 
appreciate the opportunities that they have to take advantage of them and make the most of them. So I would hope all the seniors and all the athletes out there, nothing but the best. Uh, as far as our team goes, we're looking forward to it. You know, difficult schedule, but we're fired up about it. Kids have trained all summer long, been uh, committed, and you know, can't wait to see what it looks like once you get to put the pads on and start to see everybody flying around. So without any further ado, here are some of our senior leaders. Jalen Casey, senior, defensive line. Juan Hall, senior, offensive, defensive line. Aaron Rice, senior, wide receiver, quarterback, free safety. Jasmine Wheeler, senior, safety, wide receiver. Three, linebacker, Adley. Thanks again, everybody, and best of luck this season. North Farrington will have a good quarterback this year, and Ryan Shelby coming back. Of course, he's a transfer from West Bloomfield. Um, curious to see how he's going to do. Um, questions are at running back in depth. Um, obviously, they do return um, Jasper Beeler and Aaron Rice, of course. Um, of course, um, I expect big years from all three. Uh, all, and, of course, the line is a big-time question mark for the Raiders going forward. So I caught up with John Herstein, the coach of North Farmington, to talk about more in depth about the Raiders. I got the head coach of Raider Nation, of course, John Herstein. Um, Herstein, yeah. sorry, my, okay. my name's... That's all good. Um, talk about, obviously, of course, North Farmington. Of course, last season you had that playoff run. Um, talk about also bring also talk about your quarterback situation with Ryan Shelby taking over the reins, um, and your concerns that and, and your concerns with um, up with depth. So talk about those three things, you know, in perspective. Yeah. So you know, we're real proud of the run that we had last year. You know, really worked hard at uh, you know um, having having good protocols in place and giving our kids an opportunity to play in as many games as possible. Uh, we're proud of the way the guys competed, you know, and I thought they really uh, came out ready to play and took to the coaching, so that was exciting. Uh, uh, yeah, Ryan Shelby's an exciting kid. Uh, we're really excited about the future that, that he can, that he'll bring to the team and, and uh, you know, his ability at quarterback and, and give us an opportunity to continue to play some of our other guys out at the receiver spot. Um, mm -hmm. And when we do put some of those other guys possibly at quarterback, uh, he, he's a good receiver himself. So, uh, you know, use him in multiple ways, but uh, I, I think he can, he's got a bright spot uh, as a quarterback in the future. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, depth is a concern always, uh, playing in the league that we play in and the, the challenging schedule, uh, you know, that, that'll be uh, something our guys got to overcome. I got a pretty good sized senior class, so that's exciting. Got to continue to work with the lower levels and, and building them up, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there with the, uh, with it within the league, you know, be, you know, take our guys, go out there, and you know, go compete. Talk about that trip to US 131 up in Traverse City. I mean, like that. I was really curious about that trip. I mean, like I know you guys lost in the postseason, but how was that ride up there? You know, actually, the whole day went great, other than about you know, 15, 16 minutes. Uh, you know, uh, the trip up there was great. Uh, we got really lucky, considering mm -hmm. we're playing playoff football in January. One of my all-time goals. You know, something the Lions mm -hmm. haven't done in 30 years. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, uh, you know, that was that was really, you know, a really fun trip, college-style trip. We're going to continue that that for the next couple of years with them. So that's an exciting thing. Uh, and I thought we played really well, but, you know, again, the depth part, they, mm -hmm. they, they've done a great job. Coach Eric Sugar's up there in Traverse City Central. Uh, hats off to him. He's really got that program cranking. they got some good players with the Josh Burnham kid at quarterback, yeah. uh, linebacker. He's, he's an excellent player along with several others. So, uh, you know, that, that, was, that was a fun trip. You know, we're looking forward to having him come down and play us mm -hmm. this year, week nine. Uh, they'll be at our place. So we get to return the favor. What are your expectations here, Coach? Yeah, you don't compete in every game. You know, it's a challenging league. Uh, I think, you know, like always, it's win the city championship, win the league, make the playoffs, and uh, at the end, it's you know, you want to be state champions. So you gotta gotta set those goals each year. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. A lot to look forward to for North Farmington. Obviously, I love that Lions comment he said about that. I'm playing in January football. North Farmington's schedule is very daunting and challenging. Of course, when you look at the Raiders' schedule. Um, they do open up the year at home at Tom Holland Field against Farmington. Um, that'll be a really interesting game, of course, with the Farmington Cup. That is a trophy game. Obviously, the um, you know when you look at the Farmington Cup, North Farmington's won it the last two years. Um, so I'm curious to see how Farmington will respond going to Tom Holland Field against a very good North Farmington team. That's September 3rd. They have Lake Orion at home. 
I mean, this would be very interesting. Of course, I expect the um, both those two games to be on Farmington TV Public 10. Um, Lake Orion, this is the, um, it's been a long while since the Raiders and the Dragons have met, but I know the um, coaching staff knows the Dragons pretty well from the days at Harrison. Um, so that'll be really interesting there in that match up there. September 10th, of course, is Groves. Of course, Groves beat North Farmington last season. So it'll be a really interesting game there. Um, September 17th against Oak Park. That'll be a real fun game there. Um, here's the two clash different styles between them um, and the coaching match as well between them. Um, Coach John Herstein and um, Coach um, Greg Carter. Um, September 24th, they take on Rochester. Um, it'll be very interesting there in that matchup there. October 1st. At Tom Holland Field against Adams, that'll be a really interesting game. How they, um, you know, um, how that match was last season. They won 34-33 a year ago over Adams um, in overtime. Of course, um, Coach Petrino scammed to go for two. Um, difference in that one there. Um, October 8th, they take on Seaholm. And then it really gets tough. Of course, October 15th, they go to the Swamp to take on West Bloomfield. That'll be a real interesting matchup there. And then they close out the year October 22nd with the team that they lost to up in Traverse City, 50-22, um, and that is the um, Titans of Traverse City Central course. Um, last season, of course, um, that was a really tough experience in the second half for the North Farmington Raiders in that game. Um, a lot of high expectations for the Raiders this year, as always, of course. It's going to be a team to really keep a close eye on heading into the season. Um, let's go from the Raiders to the Knights of Oak Park, of course. Um, last season, this team was 0-6 in the red. Um, and then they started getting whole, which meant they got healthy and then had an incredible playoff run, which resulted in wins against Growth Point South, um, UD Jesuit, Wyandotte, and then, of course, being Livonia Franklin, then, of course, going down the wire, Warren D. Sal, um, who ended up winning the Division II state title. So here is um, Oak Park's about the coordinator, at the podium, of course, Coach Greg Carter was not there, which was a real surprise. Uh, I'm pretty sure last year was challenging for everyone, uh, especially for us. Uh, but we have a great core of senior leadership coming back. We're returning about 15 seniors. Uh, these guys have been fantastic all year with their leadership. And um, I'm going to turn it over to them. Ryan Ramsey, senior, Sean Sanford, Cooney Watts, running back, senior. Landon Banks, senior, offensive line. Joshua Clay, senior, receiver, DB. Charles Gillespie, corner, receiver. Jannar King, senior, linebacker. Alex Jones, senior, O line, D line. Again, uh, we're just excited about this upcoming season. Uh, we're having this much senior leadership. Uh, we're expecting to do great things this year. Um, that's about it, man. When looking at the Knights, when looking at the Knights, there's a lot of questions. I mean, Ryan Ramsey takes over the reins at quarterback. Um, I'm very curious to see how this team is going to gel. Chemistry, I'm a little concerned about. Experience. I'm a little concerned about, but the schedule looks very daunting. Obviously, when you look at Oak Park, they got to open up the year with Orchard Lake St. Mary's. It's not going to be an easy game right off the get, right off the back. Going up against a very good, well-coached team under Coach George Ports. Um, and then September 3rd, they take on West Bluefield. That's another difficult match for Oak Park. That is in the Swamp also, which is going to be really a daunting task for them. Um, September 10th, Adams. Interesting matchup there. I just think when you look at that matchup, uh, they clash two different styles. Um, really interesting there in that one. Um, North Farmington, like it, like I said, another clash of two different styles. Obviously, when you look at the um, Raiders and the Knights, that'll be really interesting there. Um, September 24th, they take on Groves. Um, I really think that's going to be a real key game for Oak Park. Um, um, when you look at that, when you look at them, um, October the first, they play Seaholm. Um, and then October the 8th, it's take on Rochester. Um, and then October the 15th, it's a rivalry game with South Darts and Tech. Um, curious to see how that one's going to go. And then October 22nd, it's a big question mark there. Um, you know, very interesting if they can find a week nine, of course. So a lot of people look at, obviously, could they play Clarkston? That's not necessarily the case now. 
but now they're finding a week nine. So I'm curious to see who Coach Greg Carter will find for their game for week nine. Very daunting task for Oak Park going forward. I think it's going to be really, really challenging for them for the nights going forward. Um, okay, now we're going to take a break here. We're going to talk two more teams in the OA Now football preview show. Wait a minute. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to the OA Now Football Preview Show. White edition. I'm Sammy Terramina here. Um, we got now we got the um the Falcons of Rochester. Um last season, this team went undefeated first time since 1993. I know the excitement that Keith Dunlap, Dan Stickrat, Scott Pernstein, and of course my co-host Ian Locke were all excited about Rochester, you know, making that next step to get in the playoffs. You know, to beat their arch rival first time, then everything just went south. So here is the Falcons at Media Day on their home school on Media Day. Uh, before we get started into uh, into into our season and expectations, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't get an opportunity to introduce Josh Wrinkle in the back. Uh, he is a he is our principal as of about a month ago, maybe just brand new. He's worked as assistant principal here. Uh, and he is a uh, fantastic administrator, and we are really looking forward, uh, really looking forward to him being uh, in charge of the school and, and kind of help lead the way. Um, big supporter of athletics and students in general, so excited to have him at the helm. Uh, one of the taglines uh, or mottos of Rochester High School um, is, is character, and that's one of the pieces that we really try to strive within the student body to, to talk about and teach. And, uh, and I bring that up because I have these six guys in front of me right now, and then the entire team, um, they are some of the best kids that I've been around in, in my years of coaching. Um, I really, truly enjoy uh, coming to the school every single day and working with them. Um, after last year, obviously, it was difficult. Um, I think most people kind of found maybe reasons why they do things and kind of evaluate a lot of different stuff. And, uh, and, and the group we had last year and the group this year really are just fantastic kids. And I'm really excited um, for them this year to see what they can do. Uh, last year was one of the best years we've, we've had at the school. Um, and we're lucky enough to have a lot, of our, a lot of our players coming back, a lot of skill guys coming back. Um, we have uh, our quarterback coming back from last year. Um, and we have uh, these six guys as, as well. So I'm going to give them the mic and let them introduce themselves real quick. Cam Zero, senior, safety, receiver. Preston Schreier, senior, receiver, safety. Nick Gurley, senior, linebacker, and center. Onzo Bouchon, senior, defense and tight end. Roman Mason, senior, running back, and corner. Again, just like, uh, just like probably everybody else here, uh, they do everything we ask of them, whether it's the the COVID protocols that they had to do last year, um, the weight room, the work off season, everything, everything we ask from them, they do, um, and they provide great leadership. And like I said, I'm really excited for this year. Um, we're moving uh, up, back up to the white, and uh, we start with a uh, non-league game at Lance Cruz North. Uh, hopefully we can get started off to a, to a good start this year. Um, and just, like I said, looking forward to, uh, to, to this season. Thank you to everybody for showing up today, and, uh, and I appreciate, again, Football players, football is the greatest sport on earth. I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, next up, we get Coach Merlo and Stony Creek. Rochester is a team that got a lot of experience back, of course, led by the quarterback Alex Blano. He's got a lot of weapons back as well. Um, defense looks to be short up as well. So when I caught up with Coach um, Eric Vernon, um, obviously the thing we had to come up was from last year's success to moving up to the white, obviously with Rochester Adams. I got Coach Big Blue, Eric Vernon here. Um, obviously last year going undefeated first time since 1993. 
but that playoff loss, Adam still stings. Uh, talk about how that game felt. I was obviously disappointing, and it was just, but it was one of those things we were just thankful, obviously, to be able to play the game, be able to play last year. Um, just a lot of things were put in perspective last year, so it was obviously disappointing, but our kids have uh, kind of used it to fuel them and motivate them, and see, hopefully this year's a new year. Talk about Alex, of course. Um, he's been doing really well quarterback this year for you guys. Um, talk about how his development's been. Yeah, Alex is, is fantastic. He's such a great leader. He's so good with the ball, too. I mean, he makes great decisions, uh, very accurate. He's put on about 20, 15, 20 pounds from last year as well. Um, so uh, we're just excited to see him. He kind of has good control of the offense, and we're just really excited to see him go this year. What are your expectations here, Coach? Obviously, I, I hope we stay healthy and, and compete for the league title. Thank you real much, Coach. Appreciate it. Rochester's got a lot of questions this year, going up in the blue to the white. Being up in the blue and the white, you know, I kind of, it, it, it does have some of their memories. So, but being up in the white, you know, the competition can be much harder. And when you look at that schedule, they open up the air at Macomb Lance Cruz North on the road. That'll be very interesting. Um, of course, um, the Lancers um, really struggled last year. Um, I watched their game with Oxford and they just did not look very good at all. Um, well, they expect to be better this year, so here's see how that one's going to go up in Macomb County. September 3rd, it is the Stony Creek game. Um, this one's interesting because um, when you look at Rochester, obviously the, um, you know, they've had, I mean, Nick Merlo used to be at Rochester, coaches at Stony Creek now. Um, he's turned the Cougars into a power. Uh, I'm very curious to see how Stony Creek's going to look this upcoming season. Be a good test for Rochester. Um, good test for them, taking on a very good Cougars team. September 10th, they take on Seaholm. That's going to be really interesting there. Um, clash of them, um, be very interesting there. September 17th, if there's not any game circled on that schedule for Rochester, then that game, September 17th, you know, you've lost 15 straight to these guys. You haven't beaten them since 1996, you know. And this is the game you got to schedule, circle with a big, big time. Underline it, do whatever. That's the game Rochester is, needs to really look forward to. September 24th, they take on North Farmington. It'll be another interesting game. October 1st, they take on Groves. October 8th, it's Oak Park. October 15th, they take on Oxford. Um, this is a really interesting game over at Oxford. Um, curious to see how these two teams match up. Um, Battle has two very good experienced quarterbacks in them, Alex Blano and Brady Carpenter. Um, so really interesting matchup how that's going to be between two really good um, quarterbacks going, at, going against one another. And then they close out the year October 22nd at home against Ann Arbor Huron. Um, very curious to see how um, Huron is. They've struggled in years past, but um, very curious to see how Ann Arbor Huron is going to be against Rochester. So a lot of expectation for Rochester. Experience matters. In a, in a league like this, um, going up the white can be, certainly be a challenge, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with, with Rochester going forward. Um, let's go now from Rochester to Seaholm. Of course, um, this is a team that lost a lot of talent a year ago. Um, a team that is, you know, they got a lot to replace at their last season, last two years have been really successful. So here's Seaholm coach Jim DeWald at the podium. Thanks, Bill Burton, Burton for having us out. And Rochester has been a great little tradition to start it. Promote the OAA. We're excited to be here just like everyone else. I mean, it's going to be a repeated uh, sentence, but we're excited to get back to a normal summer. Uh, this summer has been unique, obviously, because we get into some of our team camps, and we didn't do those last year. So we have two classes, just like everyone else, that didn't have those camps. So we're, they're trying to learn how to practice and work throughout the summer. Our guys have done a great job. We just had a team camp last week. Probably couldn't be more proud of the team, the way they worked and showed resilience. So. Super excited for the season, super excited to come into OAA and, and, and play probably the premier league around. Uh, extremely great players and great programs and great coaches. So we're really fortunate to be here and we're excited to, to get going. Here's our three kids we run. I'm Jack Trench, senior, running back, slot in the corner. I'm Dylan Beasy, junior, defensive end and offensive tackle. I'm Brendan Barrett, junior, O-line dealer. Jack's a three-year starter for us and uh, is a very bold one. Uh, has a lot of positions on offense and defense, and 
Dylan is going to be a first year star of course as a junior on both sides of the ball. And Brendan started of course as a sophomore last year. We expect him to be a two way star this year as well. We're excited for what these guys are showing the field and thanks again. I'm very curious with Seaholm. I mean, I'm very, especially with Jack Trench, especially because when we talked on the podcast a couple weeks ago, um, I mean, like there was a talk about possibly playing three quarter. I mean, there were three quarterbacks in the wait in the waiting for Seaholm. Um, Trench was mentioned as one of them. I'm a little worried about his workload this year. Um, a lot of worry when I look at Seaholm, um, as I mentioned in the podcast with Coach DeWald. So I caught up to get try to get some more information with Seaholm on how everything's been going right in, in the from the last few, couple weeks. I got Seaholm, Coach Jim D. Wall. I'm hanging in there, my friend. You, of course, you were on the podcast a couple weeks ago, obviously. Um, yes, and thank you real much. Appreciate that. Um, obviously, I'm talking about Seaholm. How's it? When last we talked about, you had three guys at quarterback. Um, how's the quarterback situation been brewing since we talked last? Talked two weeks ago. You know, it, it, it's it's the same. Um, mm -hmm. I do. We just had a big team camp. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and last year, last week, excuse me, and I think one of them kind of stepped ahead of everyone else. So mm -hmm. it looks looks like it's uh, going in the right direction. But mm -hmm. I think we still got you know all next week to figure out what's going on. So we're still we're still not sure. Talk about obviously your team. Of course, last season you had a really good team, really good experience. I mean, like a little bit young this year. So talk about talk about the um, inexperience you're gonna have a little bit. Uh, yeah, we are gonna be inexperienced, but uh, you know it's a good thing. It's a good challenge to have, and our kids have taken on really well. Uh, we are extremely young, and uh, our kids learn how to work. And, I, and last week, as I mentioned at, at uh, the podium, we had a team camp, and I, I don't know if I can be more proud of a team of how hard they work and show resilience to get better. What is your expectations this year, Coach? Expectations to compete every every week, and I know it's it's, it's Coach talk, but get in the fourth quarter, a score down a score, you know, and let's go win the game, and, and you know, we squeak out five or six wins, get in the playoffs, and, and that'll be awesome. Thank you real much, Coach. Appreciate it. When you look at Seaholm, they obviously run the Veer, which is a really, you know, very similar offense to Adams, triple option. Um, they're going to need that this year to be in games this year. When I look at the schedule, it, Seaholm's schedule is really daunting. Probably in the top five when I look at tough schedule, when we look at schedules. They open up with a really good Byron Center team at home on August 27th. And then they play Clarkson on September 3rd. That's, you just, you just, go numb when you look at those two games early on. Then September 10th, you take on Rochester. Then September 17th, your rivalry game with Groves. Of course, last season, Groves knocked Seaholm out of the playoffs. Um, Seaholm has won two of the last three games against their arch rivals from Beverly Hills. And but that game will be at home. September 24th, it's Adams. Battle of the Veers. Be really interesting there. October 1st, they take on Oak Park. Be very interesting there. Um, October 8th, North Farmington. Another interesting game. Um, October 15th, it's Lake Orion. That's a very tough matchup for Seaholm going to Lake Orion. Um, and then October 22nd, they close out with Stony Creek. So when you look at Seaholm's schedule, for sure, one of the top five toughest um, in the entire league, obviously. Um, they're not conference. You have Byron Center, Clarkson, Lake Orion, Stony Creek. Not easy games. I mean, especially when you have a young, inexperienced team. Really, really difficult brewing for Seaholm going forward there. Um, let's look at my projections for the OA White this season. Of course, um, when you look at the um, coaches poll, they had Oak Park favored. Um, I'm not too fond of it because when I look at Oak Park, I mean, young team replacing a lot of talent. Um, we real much of a challenge. They had Groves also second also in the league. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about their um, quarterback receiving situation, obviously. Um, besides Jaden Magnum, I mean, like, there's there's a lot of questions elsewhere. Um, Adams, to me, has the most experience. They have the most, um, they have the most experience. That's why I have them where, where they're at right now. North Farmington at six and three. I like the program that John Hurston really done over there. Rochester, you know, I think for for them being up in the white, they're going to have some challenges. They're going to have their lumps. Um, but I think they can win four games. I mean, and then Seaholm, I got them at the Ofer. Um, Oak Park, um, I had them at one and seven. The schedule, really brutal, very difficult. Um, and then, of course, Groves, I had them at three and six. Um, very difficult non-league with Dexter. 
Lumen week one. Um, just some really difficult going on there. So those are my picks in the white. Then the top 10, obviously, of course, um, I have them from the white. I got Adams at number two. I'm really high on Adams this year. Um, I know Coach Petrino has not liked it when I've ranked Adams high in the past, um, but I really like this Adams team going forward. Um, I have North Farmington at number nine to start the year. Um, I really like the Raiders have done. Um, and then, of course, you look at other teams, keep an eye on. You got Groves, Oak Park, Rochester, of course. Um, Rochester, I'm very curious to see. Um, Oak Park, you know, if they can handle the schedule. And then Groves, same thing with them. Um, Seahome could have some struggles this year going forward as well. Um, so of course, this is, um, of course, um, also uh, I do, uh, Harper Woods as well, I had them at four and five um, this upcoming season with the schedule they have to play this upcoming season. Okay, now everybody, I'm going to sign on off here. Um, this is this week from the white. Next week, we got the OA Red. We're going to talk about one of the toughest divisions in the state of Michigan. Okay, now everybody, I'm going to take on, I'm going to log on here. Take care. See you all next week. And good luck to everybody in the OA White this upcoming season. Take care and God bless.